It's an agenda against Paul. He's a great, great professional. He's got a heart of gold. You know, we tried to hook a big one, but he got away. For me, to be sad, now is a dream come true for me. Time for Neil or No Deal on this Wednesday morning on OTBAM. And we're kicking off this morning with Paris Saint-Germain. They've moved ahead of Juventus in the race for Tottenham defender Danny Rose and are confident of completing a £20 million deal for the 29-year-old England international. John, you are a massive Tottenham fan. He's obviously an asset you could do without. Or is he? Or is there a fear of seeing him starting for someone else at the business end of the Champions League next season? Danny Rose, keep him or don't keep him? Keep him. Uh, I saw him play in the business end of the Champions League. He was very good. Played really well in Amsterdam. Uh, can be a, a temperamental kind of character, um, but a very, very good footballer. I think he's an, and he's very good at going forward as well. But I think the reason why we're hearing this story is that uh, Ryan Sessegnon, I think, is a target of Tottenham, and I think Ryan Sessegnon will leave Fulham and join Spurs. And uh, I think that's why we're seeing the Danny Rose stories. If the Ryan Sessegnon move is uh, an absolute guarantee, do you take 20 million from Paris Saint-Germain now and say, be off on your yes, way, Danny? Yes, I think you do. Like, if he wants to go down that road, he's going to go down that road. So, uh, I, like, I, I didn't fancy Trippier, and Trippier's gone to Atletico. I can, I, I'm happy with that. Rowe's less happy if he leaves. Also, there's be always that, the, the prospect of what's the situation with cover in these positions. Um, so fullbacks has been a, a perennial issue for Tottenham going back 30, 40 years. We've never had the best fullbacks, and Danny Rose has been an excellent fullback in England international. So I'd be a bit more worried about him leaving than I am about Trippier leaving. Another defender here, Daniel Levy, is ready to push Toby Alderweireld's price up to £40 million if the 30-year-old Belgian's £25 million release clause is allowed to expire on Friday. Is it too late for someone to back him before the price jumps? And how important is he now for this Tottenham squad? Uh, he's important, uh, but I just I do think he just he might want to leave from a from a financial perspective. I, I do think he might want a better deal with better wages elsewhere. Toby Alderweireld, um, Vertonghen I think is seen as more of an asset for the club than than Alderweireld. And Davinson Sanchez, of course, is a younger player who's got a lot of pace, who's who's growing in in, in the game. So once again, if Alderweireld leaves, you've got to have somebody in there. You've got to have a target for to to replace him. So. Uh, it's like the Ericsson situation. I wouldn't want to see players just walking out of the club if we don't have uh, adequate replacements. We're going to get your take on Gareth Bale in just a moment, but what's your thoughts on what's been happening with Gareth Bale, Andy, over the last couple of months? I mean, a player who perhaps would rather play golf and stay on 600k a week rather than perhaps take a little bit of a wage cut and get guaranteed first-team football somewhere. I don't know. It probably comes down to that. Well, how much desire does he have left? And where do you go after Real Madrid? You know, it's always going to be a step down, isn't it? Where do you go? It's like it's like the league going to Juventus in terms that he might do well at Juventus, but he can always go to Barcelona or Real, and there's always that kind of next. There's always that next step, isn't it? You know, as a as a young player, Bale is he's not he's come, probably coming to the end as a pacey player. You know, he's probably past his best. Do you think it's possible for someone like Gareth Bale to lose his desire to play top level sport? I don't know. That's that's what makes champions great, isn't it? Like when you see people who can so so successful at the highest level. To keep doing it, that's what makes that's what separates them from just the yeah, like it's like Ronaldo and Messi. They keep even though they're at the top, they're on the highest money. They keep wanting to win. They, maybe that's what separates him from those. Like in terms of his talent, he, he could match those guys in, in certain aspects mm. with his play. But does he have the desire? John, you know him obviously, former Tottenham player. Like he's been linked with United. Do I want him to come to me United? Probably not now. Probably not. It would be such a Man United signing. It would, yeah. Let's throw the yeah. money at it. Get Gareth yeah. Bale in. He's 30 years of age. Get, get a couple of good seasons out of it and put the sticking plaster on the big problems that Manchester United have as a club by throwing money at things. Would he come back to Spurs? I don't think so. Because of the wage structure. Like he's on three times more than what Harry Kane is on. Also doesn't uh, equate on two reasons. The high pressing game that Pochettino and the energy that, that Pochettino uh, espouses. Also, you know, we're talking about being about growing young players and uh, Troy Parrish starting in the first team, 17 years of age against Juventus. Amazing story, really. Like, like, like we don't have players. We don't have players playing in the Premier League. He's like, I don't know if like he could go out and loan, but a 17 year old playing for Tottenham Hotspur who reached a Champions League final. This is great stuff to see. Um, but Bale would, from a romantic point of view, it'd be great to see him back at Spurs and score those individual wonder goals. But um, I just think too many injuries and. Um, I think the Real Madrid 
project is it, it, there's a to toxicity about Real Madrid as a club uh, that I don't like. Uh, the Galacticos, they just the throwing money at things, signing big names, and then trying to fit them all into a, a jigsaw. And club I don't like. And Zidane, I don't know why he went back. Like he, what Zidane did was incredible to win three Champions Leagues in a row. But I also think that football has, has moved away a little bit from big names and big, big, big players and moved more towards collectives and teams and systems, as we saw with Liverpool and Tottenham in the Champions League final. Liverpool, like, it's not all about an individual like being the difference or not being the difference. It's about systems now. It helps that they've got good individuals, though. Yeah, it does. But if Bale go, if Bale's going to be in the Premier League, do they have to build a team around him? That kind of thing. Mm. Uh, unfortunately for him, it's not working out at Real Madrid now. And, and as Andy says, where do you go? It's a difficult place for like to go to China or something like that. And how much is money? How much is money versus trophies and what of any factor now? It's true. Let's talk Manchester United. Edward Bird is skipping their tour for the first time in the summer since he took up his role in 2013. They are still short of the £75 million Leicester want for Harry Maguire. They are also in the hunt for Sean Longstaff and Bruno Fernandes. Andy, as a Manchester United fan, are you optimistic? Are you pessimistic heading into the new season? Mm. Will Solskjaer still be in charge come Christmas? I've kind of turned turned off to the whole thing, you know. <laughs> I think a lot of United fans. Are that's just not saying, a good. That's not a good like, sign, I, though. I'm in the one. My, I'm a Man United WhatsApp group. It's like must be twenty lads, mates of mine, who are all Manchester United fans, and it's been dead. You know, there's there's like tumbleweeds going through it. There's like, and usually every year this time of year there'd be a buzz going on. Like even the players that's trying to sign, like Maguire, it doesn't. It's not. It doesn't fill you with inspiration, does it? You know, it's not. I don't know. Does he make a huge difference, Maguire? You know, compared to Chris Smalling. Like, is he as good as football as Chris Smalling? Probably a better defender, but not as good as football as Chris Smalling, is he? You know, in terms of playing? I don't know. I, I don't know. I think they need a clear out. I think they could do it offloading Lukaku. That's been muted. Sanchez, I think he had a good Copa America, but will he get a preseason now after being playing? If Lukaku goes, suddenly you're looking at Alexis Sanchez as your starting number nine uh, at times if you know you push Marcus Rashford push, out. I think they'll push Rashford up, up, up front now. I think it's probably he's, he's time to do that, isn't it? I don't know. He's, he's not not a good vibe about United, though. Not a good no, vibe, not, not a good not, feeling about not, the club. And, no. and Pogba, is he, uh, he going to go? You know, he's actually played well and then they'll get a bad result and then he'll, he'll throw the toys out of the pram. Well, here's an interesting one for you. So, uh, Andy Mitten from United We Stand, he's in the know when it comes to Manchester United. He's on the United Summer Tour. He was on Off the Ball last night talking to Joe, and he was making the point that even Solskjaer himself doesn't know if Pogba's leaving. Solskjaer doesn't know. He doesn't know. He wants him to stay. Uh, Pogba's training well, uh, but Pogba's wanted to leave Manchester United. The problem there is United don't want to sell him. They don't need the money. They certainly won't be buckling uh, to any lower bids from, from Real Madrid. Uh, it does look more that he's going to be staying, but I don't know, and Solskjaer doesn't know. And is, um, there, is there a worry, Andy, not, based on what you know of Pogba as a person, and I know this is where it's difficult to you know, put you on the spot, but is there a worry that if you keep him and he doesn't want to stay, is he the type who might pull a sulk for a significant chunk of the season, or will he get on with it, do they hope and feel, if he is made stay? I think the latter, to be fair to him. He, he's, he's been professional at Manchester United. And I think if, you, if there's a good comparison, maybe it's Wayne Rooney in 2013 when he wanted to leave. Mm. He could not find a Manchester United fan who supported him at the start of August 13. By the end of it, half the away end at Swansea were, were cheering his name. Wayne was the best player for two thirds of that season. Mm. And I think, I think Pogba... Um, for, for all his positive and negative attributes, I think he's always been a very good trainer. Mm. And on this pre-season tour, there was speculation that he wouldn't be on it. Well, in the first game, he was the best player on the pitch by a mile in Perth. Well, there you go. Does that give you encouragement as a Manchester United fan that actually keeping Paul Pogba may not be the worst decision in the world? When he plays, he's like when he's on these games, he's unplayable, isn't he? He's like... He does what he does, like his heart, you can't move him off the ball, he'll find a pass and he might pop up with a goal. But it's just fi it's finding, playing him in the right position and, and playing a system, as John said, it's all about systems, that suits him. Because 
he's not like he's not a defensive midfielder out and out like sit back. He's kind of a stride and kind of, he's like similar to Gerard where he without without that real explosiveness that Gerard, Gerard had at times. I don't know. I like, I like and then like Wamba Saka seems to be doing well in preseason. There's been a few clips circulating that he's playing well. He's a good young player, so that's that's encouraging. Um, but I th just being United, being a big club, they they will want one one big marquee signing, won't they? They will want something you know to add add to. With so already a top heavy squad with Lukaku, Lingard. Rashford, Sanchez. Maguire is going to be that uh, marquee signing if it does happen. Speaking of marquee signings and inflating transfer fees, Arsenal have reportedly offered Crystal Palace £60 million plus Reese Nelson on loan for a season for Wilfred Zaha. That's been rejected according to the, in to the Independent because Palace want £80 million in cash. Arsenal also tabled a third bid for Celtic's Kieran Tierney, which has been rejected. It says in my script here, are Arsenal secretly the worst set top six club going into the new season? That is ridiculous. There's no secret about it. Of course they're the worst set top six club. <laughs> are they still a top six club, John Duggan? Uh, there are there, there six, there six club. Uh, I don't know what's going on at Arsenal. They need a central defender, surely. It's the first thing they should be getting. They're going to sign one and they're going to put him back on loan straight away. Um, club doesn't seem to be very well run. Uh, fans are unhappy, and you think when Wenger leaves, okay, maybe we have a chance of a, a fresh start here, but it, no, it's not happening. Um, Man United, we're going to have months now of hugely positive Ole Gunnar Solskjaer press conferences every single week. You know, the, the spirit's great, the enthusiasm's great, we're doing really well, and I don't know if the results will be able to mirror that, but I'm, 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 I'm waiting for the, for the hugely positive Ole Gunnar Solskjaer press conferences. Um, my concern with Man United is, does he have the ability to manage Pogba, and does he have the ability to tactically manage Manchester United to do a lot better than they have been doing? And I would question that, given his record in manage, management. It's all about nostalgia, it's all about the class of 92, it's all about uh, the you know, attack, 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 it's all about the great times they all had. Um, I, I don't see him in, in the same bracket as Guardiola and Klopp as a, an elite football manager. Speaking of tricky personalities, and we'll have to finish this very quickly, You've got an interesting view of Neymar, or well, certainly you've seen him up close, and uh, he's uh, he's in the window again this summer, John. Yeah, well, Neymar is like Neymar is industrial. It's all industrial with Neymar, isn't it? It's a whole brand. It's the whole like you know, can, can you can you accommodate the brand just as much as, as the footballer? Like he is a class footballer. I've seen him up close, as I said. Um, and I think with a lot of these individuals, the, they're getting to these clubs. There's only a, probably a, a certain coterie of clubs now that can afford them, can afford the wage bill, can afford the brand, can afford, can, are able to fit them into the team and for it to work. And that's the problem when you're in uh, somewhere like PSG. Um, I think the, the person who probably has more things to think about is Kylian Mbappe because he doesn't want to waste that God-given talent that he has. Arsenal should sign Neymar. Get him into the <laughs> yeah, club yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. Arsenal should just uh, compile just the greatest... Just break the bank. Just break the bank. They should create the greatest collection of idiots that, that is available to them because they, it is one of the most... They've gone about their business at times this year in an You're embarrassing an manner. I am yeah, an Arsenal yeah. fan. Offering Reese Nelson on loan plus 60 million quid to sort of value at 80 million quid is actually an embarrassing piece of business. I admire how ballsy they are in this, but sometimes being so ballsy actually just results in complete and utter stupidity. That's all I have to say about Arsenal this morning. Neymar to Arsenal. That's the, uh, off may the, as well. That's as the line of off the ball this morning. That's may, the line. May as well just make this club a, a bunch of moaners because they're already well en route to that.